Because of airplanes, it is now possible to go thousands of kilometers around the world. Humans have been able to land on Mars due to rockets. Elon Musk, on the other hand, is thinking of ways to land humans on Mars within the next few years. As a result of our scientific breakthroughs, we have reduced the planet to such a small scale. This might also be the reason we have failed to notice some of our planet's areas. For example, planes are continually flying in the sky, practically everywhere on the planet. Yet if you look at a real-time global air traffic map and take a look at Asia, you'll find that nothing is flying over a large chunk of a particular continent. All of the world's airplanes appear to be avoiding this particular area, and some even go out of their way to avoid flying above it, as if it was a forbidden zone to cross. This region is not even in the middle of the ocean, but a massive landmass in Asia. So what is this huge mass that airplanes are avoiding? Well, it is the geographic region known as the Tibetan Plateau. What could be the reason they are avoiding this? Well, there's a lot to talk about, but before we get started, you need to be aware of the region's aviation history. The Tibetan Plateau is one of the world's largest wastelands and one of the least desirable places for people to live in, aside from Antarctica and northern Greenland. Despite being five times the size of France, it has a population of just over 14 million people scattered across seven countries. Few people live here because the plateau's average elevation is about 4,500 meters, making it the world's highest geographical region and giving it the title of the Roof of the World. Over the years, the Roof of the World has long been one of the world's most significant challenges to aviation. During World War II, when allies of British India wanted to airlift supplies into China, the first huge attempt to fly across the plateau occurred. It is important to note that the journey from eastern India to Kunming in China was not particularly long, measuring just over 840 kilometers. Because they were flying through the Tibetan Plateau's remote highlands and high peaks, the plane encountered exceptionally strong turbulence, with wind speeds reaching 200 miles per hour and temperatures decreasing to the point that their fuel froze. They also had to deal with a variety of unpredictable weather. Worst of all, there were almost no emergency airports where they could land in case of emergency. And to top it off, Japanese fighters occasionally intervene. All of these dangers combined to create an extremely dangerous flying path that resulted in the loss of 594 planes and 1,659 men in the mountains over the course of 42 months. It's vital to mention that these casualties were caused by the dangerous conditions that the pilots encountered while flying across the Tibetan Plateau, not by the actions of their enemy. It's also worth noting that the number of Allied air crews killed in the event was higher than the casualties of the entire Battle of Britain against the Germans. During those times, up to half of all Allied planes flying the route crashed, but this is clearly not the case for modern airlines today. Since the Second World War, the Tibetan Plateau has been gradually opened up, allowing modern airliners to pass through. The first airport in Chinese Tibet was constructed in 1956, followed by the development of the modern airport in Lhasa, Tibet's capital, a decade later. The Tibetan Plateau has two significant international airports, namely Lhasa and Sinin. Both of these airports mostly handle domestic air travel to and from the rest of China. In terms of international flights, Lhasa has only one international flight to Kathmandu. Sin Ing, on the other hand, handles flights to Taipei, Tokyo, and Kuala Lumpur. With this in consideration, it's safe to say that planes do occasionally fly over the Tibetan Plateau in modern times. It's just that most international flights between Eastern Asia and the West could choose to take the long way in preventing flying over it. That is all we need to know about the history of the Tibetan Plateau. Now let's talk about why, despite having modern international airports, most airplanes would still avoid flying over Tibet, neglecting the fun adventure of being able to fly over the mountains. We're going to talk about four cases behind this. To begin, there are a lot of risks while flying across the Tibetan Plateau, especially in emergency situations. Consider this, the Tibetan Plateau's average elevation is over 14,000 feet. Airplanes, on the other hand, frequently fly at altitudes of over 30,000 feet. 
It's usually not an issue, but in some critical emergency situations, such as cabin depressurization or engine failure, where the airplane protocol is to descend to 10,000 feet, this becomes a great concern. When a plane's cabin depressurizes, for example, the plane's practice is to release oxygen for passengers to use, but there's only a limited supply, which lasts around 20 minutes. This 20-minute oxygen supply is meant to help passengers breathe until the plane moves down to 10,000 feet, where passengers' breathing conditions can return to normal. Obviously, moving down to 10,000 feet cannot happen on the five times size of France Tibetan Plateau. Given that its average elevation is over 14,000 feet, it means that the plane would certainly not land at a safe point if it descended to 10,000 feet as protocol requires. Instead, it would almost certainly crash into the side of a mountain, killing everyone inside the plane. Additionally, if a cabin depressurization occurs over Tibet, the surrounding major international airports of Lhasa, Xinying, Kathmandu, Chengdu, Urumqi, and Almaty are the options for most planes to go to in an emergency situation. These airports encircle the uninhabited plateau and are hundreds of thousands kilometers apart. When a plane travels from Kathmandu to Lhasa, both Kathmandu and Lhasa can be alternate emergency airports as well as destinations. Let's take a look at the event that happened in 2018, wherein a Sichuan Airlines flight from Chongqing to Lhasa flew across the plateau at 30,000 feet when a window burst out, causing a depressurization accident. Fortunately, the pilots weren't that far from crossing the plateau, so they were able to turn around and fly to Chengdu's airport, all within 35 minutes after the depressurization. However, it is important to note that if the plane had just crossed the plateau further, the more serious problem would be the time taken to divert to any airports, which results in longer hours up in the air without any oxygen. Another reason why planes don't fly over Tibet is due to the fact that there isn't much of a demand because no one actually lives there. Long-distance international flights between Europe and Asia would not choose to fly over Tibet to avoid putting themselves in the emergency situations I've mentioned. However, there are also not much shorter domestic flights since there are also a few people in the area. The Tibetan Autonomous Region in China is home to barely over 3 million people. Although it occupies over 13% of China's total land area, it only holds 0.2% of the country's total population. The extreme turbulence is the third reason why planes avoid flying above Tibet. When strong winds blow across the plateau and mountains, the wind typically takes a wave-like form. And when planes fly through this pattern, the turbulence can become highly bumpy, complicating any emergency situations. The danger of jet fuel freezing is the fourth reason. So, when is jet fuel most likely to freeze? Jet fuel freezes at minus 40 degrees Celsius, and while such severe cold conditions are uncommon when jets fly, temperatures in the air above the already high and freezing Tibetan Plateau can reach that temperature, and even lower than that. If it is a short flight crossing the plateau, this isn't a problem. But for longer flights across the plateau, such as those that would take six hours or more, this can be a major issue. As we can see, the main reason why airlines avoid crossing the Tibetan Plateau as much as they can in reaching their destinations is due to the simple fact that in case they had an emergency while flying across the plateau, it would be the most unsafe place they could ever be. I hope that learning about the Tibetan Plateau reminds you that no matter how amazing our world's scientific achievements appear to be, there are still some wild and inaccessible areas that are dangerous to go through. If you made it this far into the video, it's probably because you enjoyed it, so give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when new videos are posted. And as always, thanks for watching.